Hi everyone. Okay, so I thought I would make a quick video about counter arguments because we need one for our essay number five. I'm trying to remember what essay we're on. Um, and so normally I would just um, talk about this in class and we'd look at a PowerPoint, but I thought because we can't do that, obviously, um, I'd make a quick video going through the PowerPoint um, as if I were in lecture. So here we go. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you um, and we can look at the PowerPoint together. I'll talk as we look at the PowerPoint and then I will post this video as well as the PowerPoint onto Canvas so you can see both of the um, both of the things and maybe look at it simultaneously as you watch the video or afterwards. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we will start looking at the PowerPoint. So here we go. Okie dokie. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. All right, it should be loading. Okay, perfect. So constructing counter argument paragraphs. Oh, maybe I can't click through. Oh, I can. Okay, so what is a counter argument? So a counter argument identifies possible arguments or positions that might hinder or affect your argument or thesis statement. So you can kind of think about what's the opposite of your own argument, okay? And it's important to know that there's usually more than one counter argument. Um, if you have a good argument, there is usually more than one. So I would say pick either the um, best one that you can find, all right, um, or the most interesting one. So be thinking about that as you're working on your, your argument. What could you argue against uh, your argument, all right? So that's what a counter argument is. What's the purpose of a counter argument? So this is a great question. So you're going to spend three to four pages arguing for a position. So why all of a sudden um, would you want to put in something that goes against your own argument? So here's three things to think about. One, it shows that you understand opposing arguments. Okay, so that's good. If you're creating an argument, you want to make sure that your reader knows that you've kind of understood all the different facets of your argument. All right. Uh, number two, it shows an understanding of potential problems within your argument. So no argument is without some sort of uh, maybe flaw, all right, or at least something that someone could say back to it, all right? If I can't argue against you, no matter how good of that argument is, uh, then it's probably a fact, all right? So understanding those potential problems is really important. And number three, to show your reader you're not naive to the fact that there are more perspectives than just your own. One of the most dangerous things when creating an argument is to put your blinders up and pretend that your argument is the best and that nobody else has anything better to say or uh, that can contradict you, all right? So when you present a counter argument, you're showing your reader that, you know what, I know what you could say against this, but I'm still going to argue for my point, all right? So keep those three things in mind when you're thinking about your counter argument. Are you doing those three things, okay? All right, so now, kind of thinking about the logistical aspects of this, there are four components to your counter argument paragraph. So you need these four steps. You need counterclaim, you need counterpoints, you need analysis, and then you need the rebuttal. I would say most people do a really nice job with the first three because that's kind of where our brain is at. We look at the counter argument, we're going to propose it, we're going to analyze it. But number four is probably the most important part and the part people forget, the rebuttal. The rebuttal is going to get you from the counter argument back into your own argument. So we'll take a few minutes, we'll break down each part, all right? So let's start with the counterclaim. So your counterclaim is simply stating the claim of the opposing view. You're not telling me why it's wrong, why you don't like it, we're not analyzing it yet. You're just simply saying, here's a counter argument. So uh, it should be maybe a sentence or so, all right? Number two, you're gonna think about counterpoints. So counterpoints are points that support the counterclaim. Uh, it says this is a place to discuss the counter argument, give the most significant pieces of evidence. When you are presenting your counter argument, you want to make sure you give some detail about the counter argument. Give it some time, create a nice, you know, healthy sized paragraph. This is where you do that. This is where you put yourself into the other side's shoes and you 
um, try to kind of argue uh, for this other, other perspective. All right, so take your time with your counterpoints and make sure that your reader really understands the counter argument. So this could be maybe three, five, seven sentences long. You really want to make sure your reader understands the counter argument. All right, and again, at this point, we're not saying anything against the counter argument. We are simply providing it, okay? Now in step three, this is where you get to start tearing apart the counter argument, the analysis. So this is your chance to analyze the counter argument. Would you consider the following, or you could consider the following questions. Is there faulty logical reasoning? Is there support weak? Is there an alternative, alter, I can't say that word, but you can read it, alter, yep. Motives, is there an emotional issue versus logical issue? All right, so if I were to say, if my argument for this paper was dogs are better pets than cats, okay, that's my argument. Then I come in with my counter argument and I say, no, cats are better. And the only and like reason I give you is that cats are fluffy. You could come back and analyze that and say, well, that's really not good evidence. <laughs> Just because a cat's fluffy doesn't make it a better pet. All right. So in the analysis, you need to be looking and kind of really delving into why the counter argument is not sufficient as an argument. All right. Um, in the analysis, you might want to look at all of the counterpoints that you have um, brought up, or maybe there's just a few that you want to talk about. That is up to you. But again, the analysis is where you start kind of picking apart the counter argument. Next comes the rebuttal. And like I said a few minutes ago, the rebuttal is super important because it's going to get you from your counter argument back into your own argument. So like it says, this is the time to say why this argument isn't valid. And again, you can refute the entire counter argument or specific counterpoints, all right? So here's your time to say, okay, I understand the counter argument. Here's why it doesn't work. Here's why my argument is better, all right? So make sure you have a rebuttal. Um, yeah, I just can't stress that enough. It's super important. Um, so if you need help with this or any of the four steps, please let me know. We need all four and they all need to be working um, together. Okay. Um, let me get rid of that. Okay. Now, uh, final thoughts. Counter arguments paragraphs should be either right before the conclusion or right after the introduction. Why and how do you know which one to choose? So if your argument hinges on you arguing against maybe a popular opinion, it's always nice to have that counter argument right after the introduction. So if I need to know what your counter argument is first, put it first. If your paper doesn't you know, revolve around your counter argument and you just need it because you need it for uh, this essay, then please put it right before your conclusion, okay? Again, that's something if you need help with, I'm here to help with that. Um, okay, the next point, remember modal qualifiers weaken the opposition's perspective. So if you go into your counter argument and you say, you know, in a few circumstances, this works. That might hurt your own argument, okay? So be aware of that, all right? Um, but yes, however, clauses help you to identify that you're about to rebuttal. Yeah, you wanna make sure you're able to transition from the, that analysis into the rebuttal, and these words could really, really help with that. And again, if you need help transitioning, I'm here. Um, the most important aspect of this complicated paragraph is the rebuttal. I know I've said that a thousand times, but it really is true. All right. So please make sure that you are um, doing that and that you have a, a nice uh, rebuttal. All right. Okay. Let me stop my sharing. All right. I think I'm back on my screen. So um, that's it. Those are counter arguments and counter argument paragraphs. 
Uh, so make sure you've got one of those. And like I said, I'm going to link this video as well as the PowerPoint that we just looked at onto um, my onto the Canvas module. So you can take a look at that. And I think that's it. So, okay. Goodbye.